Hello, I'm Marcus Buckland, formerly of Sky Sports, and now one of the two main tennis presenters on Amazon Prime Video. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this Business of Tennis webinar presented by the Tennis Industry Association UK. TIA UK is the not-for-profit members trade organization bringing together companies, clubs, and individuals with business interests in UK tennis. Now, I would normally be introducing this topic live from the All England Club, but because of COVID-19, the TIA UK has converted its annual Business of Tennis Forum into a series of webinars aimed to help tennis club businesses grow and be more profitable. Uh, the series of webinars is sponsored by BLM, the TIA UK's legal partner, and is supported by the LTA. Now, the webinar topics focus on some key business issues affecting clubs and operators of tennis venues, illustrate best practice, and how clubs can maximize opportunities to grow and increase revenue. Of course, we are living in strange times and there are plenty of challenges ahead, but there's also a lot of support from the governing body and others such as TIA UK to help get tennis clubs back on track. The good news is that you don't need to take any notes because a copy of this webinar will be available on the TIA UK website. The webinar is pre-recorded, but you can send any questions to the email given at the end of the webinar and you'll be answered just as quickly as possible. We sincerely hope that you find this interesting, informative and forward thinking. Thank you very much. Sustainability will probably not be on everyone's high priority list at the moment, but this is fast becoming a standard business principle and usual practice. Today's webinar aims to encourage you to rethink and to reset what you do as a club in this area, so that when things return to some type of normality, you might put into practice some new measures that may yield positive results in the future. Later, there is a short presentation from the TIA UK to remind you of some of the common tools and practices adopted generally to improve sustainability. But first, we hear from the All England Lawn Tennis Club Sustainability Manager about the exciting and long-term commitment being undertaken by the championships to make the event more sustainable in the future. Hello, my name's Hattie Park. I'm the Sustainability Manager at the All England Lawn Tennis Club, Wimbledon. I'm going to talk to you about some of the things we're doing to protect and preserve the natural environment. Um, so I'll focus on why we're doing this, the commitments we've made and some actions that we're taking. And I think where we're starting from uh, is, you know, we, we depend on the natural environment and we have a climate crisis, a biodiversity crisis, and as an organisation, I think, and, and more of us more broadly, are very aware of the connection between planetary health, ecosystem health and human health. Um, and what makes the All England Club and the Championship so special is while we always look to move with the times, we also really uh, are mindful about our heritage and we want to maintain that heritage so there is a sense of stewardship across the organization and protecting the environment is is really part of that stewardship so earlier this year we we announced a commitment to the environment which goes beyond reducing our impacts and actually a 2030 aim to have a positive environmental impact and for us that's about focusing on four areas firstly bringing emissions from our operations down to net zero secondly being more efficient much more efficient with our use of resources to having a net gain approach to biodiversity and using our influence to inspire wider action and I'll just go through each of those areas with a few examples in turn. So starting with emissions, um, we need to know where we're starting from, so our, our kind of baseline footprint and so 
the the chart here shows the emissions that we're currently able to and are measuring um, and that gives us a starting point and, and we're able to track our progress so at the top you've got the direct source of emissions which is vehicle fuel uh, and gas those are emissions that we sort of burn directly uh, then you have the indirect emissions which is purchase of electricity and then um, there are third party indirect emissions and for, for this purpose we would bring in flights from all england staff plus of course um, tournament officials and players um, coming to the UK to participate in the championships and um, beneath that you've got um, treatment of water and waste and transmitting electricity to the site. Um, while we're very aware that we influence a far greater footprint but, but for now uh, here's our starting point but we would be looking to widen the scope in future and um, the approach we're taking is is threefold i mean firstly it's about making reductions so being much more efficient reducing and then decarbonizing so that's switching away from fossil fuels to renewables those that should always be the first priority but there will be some emissions remaining particularly for us um, associated with flights by by 2030 those emissions will still remain and so there you have the opportunity to invest in carbon sinks to offset those emissions so just some examples of things we're doing um, we have some electric cars in our courtesy car fleet for players during the championships and we'll look to increase the number of those vehicles we have with a view I would hope that we can get to an all electric fleet um, in time for our 2030 deadline. Um, around the grounds, we already buy renewable electricity. We're switching out older, less efficient lighting with LED lighting, which uses much, much less energy, very commonly known. Uh, also, um, optimizing the way the buildings perform, so tracking where the consumption is where there are no, uh, anomalies in consumption and adjusting those we have electric equipment as well um, but also an important area as well is around menus food so um, animal agriculture food waste both have big environmental impacts and so during the championships for example at all of the food outlets there is there is a uh, increasing number of vegetarian and vegan options to the point that uh, in the 2019 championships the iconic Wimbledon strawberry were, was available with vegan cream. Um, looking to the future we have an incredible opportunity with our site-wide regeneration. Um, we will be having some renewable energy on site now so we'll have solar panels that's on the left hand side is the a new covered courts building on somerset road that's going up at the moment we'll have some solar there we already have some solar panels at our community sports ground in rains park but also looking at ways with the acquisition of the golf course how we can decarbonize heat so how we can degas by uh using heat pump technology so we're really exploring all we can do there and we're very fortunate to have that opportunity recognize that not all organizations have that chance um, and, and we know that we're lucky that we do moving on to resources um, this is the approach here is ultimately that nothing should go to waste um, it's about designing out waste uh, reducing and reusing as much as we can regenerating natural systems and none of our waste goes to landfill food waste goes to anaerobic digestion and as much as we can is recycled um, but there's always more that we can do and we need to also think about not just the day-to-day -day waste that goes in those bins during the championships but also construction waste all of the resources that we use water things that we buy and sell so again some examples we have a lot of bottle refill points around the grounds really clear labeling for the championships of the bins um, the contents of those white bins that you can see were tipped sorted 
um, in the loading bay underneath number one court and that meant that we got a much greater volume of really clean good quality materials for recycling um, the racket stringers removed plastic bags on the rackets uh, last year for the first time um, and that while in the big scheme of things might not be a, a hugely uh, a hugely big quantity of plastic it was still very symbolic and it was really noticed and I think that is where we can kind of raise awareness and use our influence um, and then in future we'll uh, be introducing a reusable cup for drinks to sort of get away from single use items so encouraging a culture of reuse tennis balls during the championships are sold with proceeds going to the foundation and year-round use of tennis balls they're then used for coaching and donated to schools garden waste uh, mulched on site and spread around the grounds um, and then a less photogenic image but this is the uh, all England Club community sports ground in Rains Park. We're just building 16 new grass championship quality grass courts. Um, and we have a SUDS scheme there, sustainable urban drainage scheme. And that basically mimic, mimics natural drainage patterns and is about retaining water on site so we've got there's a storage tank there that you can see we can store 250,000 litres of water and that will mean that we can keep water naturally topped up without having to draw nearly as much water from the mains um, there's a picture of the solar panels on the maintenance yard and then year round we've taken away cups you know paper and plastic cups Moving on to biodiversity, this is a, a picture of the living wall that uh, is on the side of number one court. Um, it provides a stunning backdrop for guests uh, watching the tennis, but also um, it's, it's good for local biodiversity. It's planted with flowering species, uh, which encourage pollinators and, and you want as diverse a range of um, of plants and, and wildlife as you as you possibly can that's what we need for a healthy resilient ecosystem and the approach here is around protecting preserving and enhancing so again just some you know ducks waddling around the grounds the center court and and clubhouse covered head to toe in boston ivy and we have over the year, over recent years, really widened out the species of plants that we use as we present tennis in an English garden. Um, using planting to delineate areas of the ground, so where we can, can we have a hedge rather than a wall? Um, and that the picture in the top is the rose arbor and again that's a very nice place to obviously sit and, and um, enjoy some lunch or, or a drink but also just you know using natural methods of breaking up the grounds um, on the golf course across the road we're lucky enough to have um, some veteran oak trees and we're doing lots of surveys over there so we really understand the local ecology what we have so we can protect it and as part of that we harvested acorns from those trees and we're germinating from them so we can kind of promote and protect that ancient species for years and years to come thinking about the influence we have during the the around the time of the championships you know the eyes of the world turn to us and while obviously we are passionate about tennis there are other things that we care about and we can use our platform to raise awareness and promote positive messages and this is something that we can really do in partnership with with our partners um, other and other tennis organizations um, we had the bottom right there we had an area in the grounds last year which was a, a sustainability area in partnership with uh, for example JLR Evian um, talking about themes that that hopefully people can relate to so so planet friendly food and drink low carbon travel um, you know reusing resources 
Um, that's Kevin Anderson, who did a film with the stringers talking about what they'd done, how they changed their practices um, to remove plastic bags. We had eco champions around the grounds, sort of showing our commitment, but also helping people to uh, put the right thing in the right bin. And as part of their training, they had visited the recycling plant where Wimbledon's waste is taken so they could understand how the recycling works so definitely can advise people what to put in each in each bin and that was a really valuable exercise for me personally as well to have seen for myself what actually happens to our waste so at that point you can really think about what we provide and ensure that it can be dealt with properly at the other end, either reused or recycled, if at all possible. We are a member of BASIS, uh, the Association, British Association for Sustainable Sport. We've signed up to the UN Sport for Climate Action Framework, and that um, is an international um, group of sports organisations and, and you make commitments under there, under that framework to reduce your climate impacts but also use your influence. So I think it's a really sensible framework for sports organisations. Wimbledon Broadcast Services is a member of a group with um, called Albert um, under the BAFTA umbrella and that is about promoting sustainability for sports broadcasters. So using as many ways as we can to learn from others and share with others. So forums like this are, are great for that. Um, but obviously there's a long way to go. Time is of the essence. We certainly don't have all of the answers we've got a lot to learn along with everyone else but the commitment is definitely there but thinking about the scale of the event that's a lot of people um, coming to Wimbledon we obviously we don't really there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment with the post-covid world we don't really know what we're looking at there will be budget constraints some of the investments that we might have been planning to make may be pushed a little bit more into the future there's definitely a, a look that a return to disposables we need to try and work out how we can avoid going backwards while obviously still you know using materials sustainably and keeping everybody safe decarbonizing heat along with everyone else it's it is a real challenge but i think you know despite that there's lots that all of us can do and while some of the things i might have talked about are perhaps on a on a larger scale especially perhaps our site wide regeneration the principles can be scaled up or down and i'm sure there are lots more ideas out there across the board um, but, you know, just some simple principles in terms of energy, be efficient, you know, don't waste anything, buy renewable or better still generate your own if you can. Think about menus, reduce food waste as much as you can. And then on the menu, more plants, less meat, better for the environment. And it's a healthier menu as well. So if you, that resonates quite well with the sporting audience, I think. Thinking about waste, as I said, if you know, prioritize reuse as, a, as the for what reduce and then reuse, um, understand what can be recycled and transport, prioritize active travel, walking, cycling, access by public transport, you know, incentivize car share, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's quite a lot of information out there. Um, you know, basis do webinars uh, um, usually on a monthly basis. The International Olympic Committee have lots of very useful um, documents on their website. Um, the UN Sport for Climate Action Framework, that framework itself has got is, is a nice framework to follow. Um, and then the, on the right, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, that's a report about sport and biodiversity, and there will be a new report coming out um, in the coming days. So I hope that has been a relatively useful summary of some of the steps we've taken and what we're aiming to achieve. Um, and thank you very much for listening. 
Hi, I'm Phil Sandilanders, Business Development Manager for the TIA UK. Today I'm presenting some thoughts on sustainability and why I think it's important for your club to get involved and to make this a priority in your future operations. If you already undertake some of the measures as, as we illustrated in the presentation, then that's really great. If not, or if you haven't thought about how your club can add value, this is a good time as any to think about how you can get involved. The actions and commitments of the All England Club and the Championships on sustainability is, of course, at the high end of the spectrum. So can ordinary tennis clubs make much difference in this area? Well, yes, particularly if a good proportion of the 5,000 tennis clubs and venues in the UK participated, even in a small way. Sustainability is fast becoming a standard business principle, not just a nice or good thing to do. There is a real business case for investing in sustainability measures while protecting planet Earth at the same time. It can boost your club brand. It increases your, your ability to attract staff, customers and investors who would expect sustainability to now be a strong operational fo focus. It can reduce your operating costs and increase profitability. For example, initiating a switch off campaign, only charging appliances overnight keeping windows and doors closed, replacing desktops with laptops next time round. And by coming more a more sustainable business, you can demonstrate your leadership and commitment to a healthy and safe future for all. Tennis clubs are no different to any other business when it comes to adopting sustainable measures. Here are some areas to think about that are probably, that are probably relevant to all tennis clubs. In terms of renovating tennis courts, all clubs, of course, will go through a long list of unique requirements relating to playing quality, building cost, contractor experience, maintenance cost and longevity. But clubs should also address sustainability issues in their final selection. Low maintenance means less materials and less labour required over the lifetime of the court, also meaning less visits by maintenance contractors. Recycling of surfacing materials. If you have or thinking about some type of carpet system, can this be recycled efficiently or cut up, cleaned and reused for another purpose? Macadam tennis courts, of course, continue to be popular due to the UK weather. But are there new materials or installation methods being developed that reduces the use of bitumen production processes? Upgrading flood lighting. You can get energy efficient court lighting with high performance fixtures with lower wattage lamps. And LED systems, of course, are now becoming far more popular for outdoor sports facilities, providing longer life, instant illumination, energy efficiency and reliability. When thinking about upgrading your fencing, could you reduce the amount of metal used by reducing the height at the back of the court and reducing or eliminating altogether fencing on the sidelines? And of course, there are many other well-known operational tools and practices that together can make a significant contribution, however small your tennis club is. Water reduction, of course, considering harvesting systems, introducing water saving devices such as shower timers, tap aerators, leak detectors, outside tap guides. Energy reduction making sure that your m and &E systems work, work effectively and efficiently, introducing energy saving products such as eco chargers, smart sockets and energy monitors. Recycling waste is a big one. Reuse, reduction in landfill waste generally, clearly signed bins for recycling that are large enough, but also think about getting rid of personal bins under desks. All these things work. Ensure your installation is the best it can be for buildings. For new buildings, designing, designing in air tightness, making best use of natural light, choosing structural systems early on to achieve the best energy efficiency, and building in renewable technologies such as solar panels, biomass boilers for larger buildings, ground or air source heat pumps, and rainwater harvesting not forgetting a comprehensive maintenance regime with appropriate funds to put things right at the right time. And landscaping, the importance of encouraging biodiversity because it supports ecosystems that supply oxygen, 
clean air and water, and pollination of plants. Many things contribute towards a better environment, and there is extensive advice and guidance on the internet around this issue. So when working on the land adjacent to your courts and around your club, recognize the value of what you've already got. Like Wimbledon, keep or build hedges rather than building brick or concrete walls. Consumables, a big area for change. Choose eco-friendly suppliers. Choose more plant, less meat. Minimize waste. Use green cleaning materials. Use proper kitchenware rather than disposable cups and plates and cutlery. Administration, reusing old files. Reuse, use less paper, go paperless. Reusing paper, print smarter, and on and on and on. And how about the, the things that your own members should be thinking about, particularly things like transportation, walking, cycling, car sharing. All of the above needs leadership and drive from club committees and officers for members to adopt. Tennis equipment. Rackets, of course, uh, can be recycled or you could recycle broken or wanted rackets. Can your coach use, use your unwanted rackets for your programs? How about encouraging donations from members every two or three years and contacting some of the numerous tennis charities such as Dan Maskell Tennis Trust or Tennis for Free or Street Grains? Strings are a bit more difficult. Uh, we can't find any, can you find any strings that are made from recycled synthetics? If not, natural gut strings appear to be the more friendly option, although of course more pricey and of course not vegan. Grips is an alternative to leather. Leather, of course, comes at its own cost to the environment, and grips made out of plastic products are not necessarily biodegradable. So maybe, one that, maybe this is one that needs more thought going forward. There are 500 million balls sold every year, but most balls are used only for a handful of times before being discarded. To deal with balls losing pressure over a period, of course, non-pressurized balls are gaining more popularity and their playing quality is improving. But there is also the issue of packaging, which has its own production and recycling issues using metal cans and plastic cans, etc. But there are good signs of development in this area. Wilson, for example, are producing cardboard ball cans that can be easily re recycled. And established independent British company Price of Bath have developed the first recycled ball in the world, making old tennis balls into new ones, both pressurized and pressureless. They are currently running a pilot scheme and are looking for clubs to assist with play testing. Or, of course, old balls could be sold or donated to charities. Recyclable.com is a not-for-profit organization that pays for used balls and sends them on to charities. Clothing, obviously, is a big, big issue in terms of sustainability, and these can be re recycled, but at least when purchasing, use sustainable materials. S some tennis footwear is becoming more eco-friendly than others, but there are a number of routes to get further use from your old trainers. Recycling.co.uk is one, and Nike's Reuse a Shoe Scheme is another. Personal tennis equipment and attire is a good source for recycling and reuse. Find out which companies are interested and organize a collection of used equipment from your members every two years. In terms of education, it's important that you undertake a sustainability audit of your operations and measure your, your current output against any relevant standards. There's a lot of information on how to do this on the internet. In all your decision making, consider the three Ps, people, planet, profit. Every decision must consider the potential impact on people and the planet, not on short-term gain. Once you have a strategy, train your staff and promote the activities to your customers and members. Foster a culture change and seek other external partners with similar aims. Be seen to support any local community causes and basically spread the word that this is what you are doing for the cause. Of course, there is only so much you can do, and so it is much more effective to focus on supporting a few initiatives that really matter to you, your staff, or your customers. So try implementing ideas one by one, not all at once. The LTA will particularly like to hear from clubs that have achieved success through their own sustainability strategies or good outcomes from individual projects. 
It plans to provide resources in this area specifically for tennis and is keen to develop good practice guidance from other sports such as from the experience of golf and cricket clubs. The email contact uh, address is in the closing slide. In the meantime, if you want to read further information in the context of sport and sports clubs, go to the Sport England website and look up Sustainable Clubs. I hope you found this presentation food for thought. You won't achieve overnight success and some cost-saving measures will may need initial investment, but will yield positive results in the long term. Thanks for listening. Well, we very much hope that you found this webinar of interest to your own business. Tennis has been more fortunate than some other sports in being able to get back to some sort of normality at a relatively early stage. And many clubs have recorded an increase in interest and membership during the pandemic, which, of course, is encouraging for the industry as a whole. From my own personal point of view, Prime Video were thrilled by the number of people who watched the Battle of the Brits at the NTC during the summer, then the Cincinnati event, which of course took place in New York, the US Open itself, and most recently the Italian Open in Rome. If you want to ask a question in relation to the contents of this webinar, you can email phil at tiauk.org. That's phil at tiauk.org, and you will receive a response shortly afterwards. Details of other webinars and information on the TIA UK can be found on the website tiauk.org. And that is it. Thank you very much for watching.